It being 7.30, let us call the Situate Planning Board in order. The first item is to accept the agenda for June 14, 2012. Do I have a motion? I motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is, is an informal discussion for 50 Country Way. It's proposed mixed-use development. And the applicant slash owner is Chris Ford. Uh, by way of introduction, before turn it over to Chris and his, his team, um, when we initially started looking at this, subsequently we found that there is a, a question that's been raised about the uh, bylaw that would be applicable, to, which is the Village Business Overlay District. What I'd like to do tonight is to not talk about that, not that we're going to ignore it, but at this point what I want to do is just to come back and talk around it to see what your proposal is and how it fits into the existing bylaw, but we can back up and internally work with the Zoning Enforcement Officer to resolve the difference in the interpretation of the bylaw. So having said that, Mr. Ford, if you will introduce your team and give us an overview of what you're looking to do. The, uh, move up to the I have with me tonight uh, Greg Moss, who is the engineer for the project. Uh, Paul Ford uh, is responsible for the uh, architectural work from the drawings. And we've also had the assistance and the advice of uh, Eric Kundi. And uh, I've owned this property for 20 years. And uh, we, we've been operating, uh, for those of you not familiar, there's a building uh, that stands out front on the right side. Uh, across the morning glories, and we always have to tell people where are we? We're across the morning glories because that's become a real landmark, as you know, in Situate. Everybody knows where the morning glories is, and we're, we're proud to be next to them. Anyhow, uh, this building, uh, we've been before since 2007, before the planning board. This is the third time we've been before design review with myself and with some others who had an option on the property, uh, maybe as many as four or five times. Uh, and now we're here again tonight, and I think I think we're finally we arrived where we want to be, and I think where we found uh, uh, you might want us to be. Uh, we were urged to have a, a retail component to this project, and we have one in the front, and it's of a modest scale. Uh, we we did something different this time. The previous proposals were going to take down the existing building, and. Uh, in fact, Laura spoke to me that, uh, you know, if there was some way to preserve that or even to relocate it, that, that a lot of people would appreciate that to preserve this, you know, classic historic building. And we, we had to, you know, evaluate the economic consequences of that act, but we feel it's in the interest of the town, frankly, and, uh, and, and we can live with retaining it. It's a building that requires a lot of maintenance. It's a 1886 building. It's 130 years old. Uh, but we have been doing quite a bit of upgrading to the building internally uh, and externally, and we're going to have it looking like a real show place in and of itself by the time we're done. And then in the back, uh, Greg and Paul will explain further, we have a mixed component on your right uh, of office and residential, and then to the left is all residential. So there are 25 new residential units on the property to and augment the existing five units, so we're coming right in at the number 30 total units. Uh, and in addition, we have at least four commercial spaces, uh, and, and it could be divided up a little bit differently. Uh, so having said that, uh, I want to turn it over to Greg at this time, and if you have any questions of Paul or Parker, uh, well, they can speak later. Sure. Greg Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering. I'm just going to pass out a couple copies of, of our site plan to the audience because I know it might be hard for them to see as well as some of the calculations that we've produced. You can just hand some of those around. It would be appreciated. This project, I'll touch on the existing site and the proposed and the benefits that we are proposing as part of this development. The existing site located at 50 Country Way uh, consists of 61,391 square feet, approximately an acre and a half. It's all upland area. It's located in the, it in, located in the business zoning district. It's also located in the Greenbush Village Business Overlay District. Existing building, as Mr. Ford said, uh, you'll see here on the site plan, consists of five rental apartments currently. Right now there's a parking lot 
in front of the building and there's a small parking area in the back of the existing building. It's serviced by municipal water, uh, municipal sewer uh, at this point. Properties abutting us, our property line, um, you'll see here, around the back, it's kind of an L-shaped property. Uh, Morning Glories, immediately to the north of us. Uh, land owned behind Charlie Reynolds' store by Charlie Reynolds. Uh, this is the garage next to Charlie Reynolds' store. And then the Greenbush commuter rail line uh, just off our site to the right. So the proposed site, we're hoping to utilize the Village Business Overlay District, which allows the mixed-use buildings. It allows us to do the commercial component as well as the residential component. Uh, we'll be retaining the existing structure and proposing the three new buildings, and we're hoping to phase the project. Each building will be a separate phase of it. This is a presentation of the overall when it's a completed project. Uh, phase one would be the commercial at the front of the property. This is a uh, 1,783 square foot building. Uh, we have a rendering of that on this bore. You see it's a one, a one story building. Uh, it would be one or two separate units, separate small businesses located at the front of the site. This is a view from Country Way looking uh, at the property. The second phase would be uh, strictly residential building, building B. This consists of six one-bedroom apartments and four two-bedroom apartments. And then the third phase would be building C. This is another mixed-use building. We are proposing in the front here, this portion of the building would be commercial space. Uh, it's approximately 2,363 square feet commercial on the first floor. And then on the remainder of the first floor and second floor would be two studio apartments, 11 one-bedroom apartments, and two two-bedroom apartments. We have renderings of those. I won't bring them up, but I'll slide them out this way so you can see them. This is uh, the third building, building three. This is a look at the front uh, of the commercial portion. You'll see some of the architectural features. Paul can talk uh, later in detail on those if you'd like. Uh, tried to capture some of the architecture style of the existing building that's out there. Uh, some of the roof lines. Oops. There we go. Supporting the site, we're proposing a number of infrastructure improvements. We're going to be extending the public water service onto the property. Uh, and extending our sewer connection. It'll be, it'll be tied into town sewer, town water. Uh, we met informally with Al Banger, Kevin Cafferty at the DPW. Um, we're looking at possibilities of doing a looped water service, uh, either internally within our site or the potential for looping it off-site you know, for, for future development of the uh, <coughs> plans here. We have a new parking lot. As you can see, the new parking lot is 57 spaces. When you calculate the parking requirements uh, based on the usage, uh, it requires between 49 and 56 spaces, so we comply, as you can see. And I think one thing to notice is that we have significant landscaping within the parking areas. You know, we have, we have in, no, in no location do we have more than eight spaces without a landscaped island. And in most cases, you'll see that there's only three or four spaces. So a lot of green space, a lot of landscaping on this site. We'll be proposing a new drainage system. The drainage will be subsurface under the parking lot. We've done preliminary soils testing, had a very good soil here. It's a really coarse sand material. Uh, it should be perfect for an infiltration system. Site grading, you'll know this right up the top of the plan. This is Stockbridge Road. Uh, we have topography sloping down onto our site, but our site in general is a flat site. There'll be minimal earthwork here. Uh, we're not taking down any significant vegetation. The site is largely cleared already. Um, no need to make any new cuts into any hillsides. This is a, an excellent site for this type of development. We're looking at upgrading the entrance of the site. Uh, we do share a common entrance with the Morning Glories property. Mr. Ford's property has the benefit of an access and utility easement, 
over that property. Uh, we're going to be maintaining that existing curb cut. We, we've engaged a traffic engineer to help us uh, with some of the maneuvers of cars and some of the pedestrian safety concerns that have arisen uh, through our discussions. So we'll be making significant improvements at the entrance to ensure public safety. Uh, it's a great location uh, when you look at traffic. You know, we're right near all the major thoroughfares in town, Country Way, Driftway, 123-3A. We're also going to be doing an improvement to the public walkway. Right now, um, out behind us at the MBTA line, as part of the Greenbush project, they have created from, from Driftway a public walkway or bikeway that comes up and it, it actually ends just off site to the south. We're going to connect into that public public walkway, bring that onto our site, and then we'll have sidewalks all the way out to Country Way to tie into that existing system. So the residents of this development here will be able to walk down that pathway and anyone else will be able to walk from Country Way through that pathway. Um, over to Dunkin' Donuts, over to the marina, over to the bike path along the driftway. Uh, it'll really be a public benefit by having that connection there without having to walk up Stockbridge Road and around uh, through the train station area. <coughs> Open space, as I mentioned, we've tried to maintain above the bylaw. The bylaw requires 20% open space. The current proposal has 29% of the site is open space, uh, approximately 17,800 square feet. And timelines for this, we're hoping to submit a definitive site plan, you know, pending, pending input from you. We had our preliminary design review meeting. Um, we're hoping to get the ball rolling and submit a formal site plan within the next one to three months. Um, we've started discussions with our traffic engineer. We're kind of ironing out some of those details. And as Chairman Limbacher said, we did come up with another with another detail as far as zoning. We're trying to determine the best way to address that at this point. But I'm hopeful that we can. It's it's clear that the bylaw was meant to include this property in the Greenbush Overlay District. So we're just trying to iron out the details on that. I think we're we're all eager to work with the town. Um, ready to make ready to make progress at this site and hope that this proposal is you know better than the last and something that we can work together on. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you. Yeah, let me just clarify that this, we actually do not have an application in front of us. What we have is, we have a proposal that's come back in, in a couple of different forms, and because of the complexity and the density of it, well, we've asked this for it to continue an informal discussion, and, and Chris and his team have done that. Uh, so uh, just to, uh, want to make sure that everybody's aware of the fact that there is no formal application in front of us. This is a, a discussion where we can all put our input in so that we can give, give the Ford the Ford's a sense of direction in terms of what we see and what we think about this particular project. Uh, having said that, we can, let me talk to Laura, if you've got any comments and then okay. design review? You want to talk a little bit? Um, okay, sure. Oh, oh, do you want to go first? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, we'll just, okay. Um, mine is probably more general and, and Laura's is probably more specific yep. to building design, so maybe it, it makes sense for me to just go. Um, the property has to be on sewer. <coughs> That's one of the things that, that um, well, first of all, I, I wanted to say the, the uh, proposal has been reviewed. I think it just went through its fourth review with the design review committee. The plans were also distributed to department heads to get their input and it's it's one of the sites in town that we've been carrying on a list of um, potential development for maybe I, I'd say at least a year probably more like two years um, so when we've had some discussions you know we've we've been aware that it's a site that you know something is going to be coming forward um, and I think throughout that process um, there's been some refinement of what the requirements are um, one of those was that the, the pr proposal does have to be on sewer. Um, it's located in the Water Resource Protection District, so there is a higher standard than in other locations for, um, for drainage as far as um, suspended solid removal. Um, you know, most likely there will be, you know, the subsurface <coughs> infiltration, but there, you know, I'm sure is going to be some way to address um, some, of those, some of those concerns. Um, 
The bylaw is really intended for mixed use buildings and this proposal is a little bit um, out of the, the um, I think out of the, the vision of the bylaw in some ways because of the buildings that are being proposed, there's only one that's really truly a mixed use building. Um, so, you know, that may be something that the board wants to address in, in some way. Um, there is a, a zoning issue um, that, you know, we're not going to talk about, but all I want to say is that I think it makes sense to wait on your actual application until that zoning is resolved. Um, Okay, um, I am really glad to see that the the architecture I think has moved through some some evol you know evolution um, to where it is now. There is a standard in the uh, zoning bylaw for the roof pitch, and the reason for that isn't so much you know any particular building like the older building that you have on the site. It's more just to maintain some kind of a traditional feel instead of. Um, like a flat roof or or some of the the kind of modernistic pitch roofs that you see around on you know some of the more standard buildings so they are looking for 8 to 12 slope um, except for 20 percent of the roof can be different from that but I think I, I'm not sure that that everything that you've got you know really meets that there are a few places I mean particularly with the building out front that looks like um, a little bit more like a sort of standardized architecture. I'm, you know, not sure it's all it all meets it, but you know, I'm just putting that out there for something that you know would be good to see what all those slopes actually are on the roof. But I, I'm not, you know, asking for anything right now. I'm just putting that out for the board. Um, you know, if they think that's, you know, that's important to follow up on that. Um, as far as the density, um, the the base density that's allowed on the site without any kind of public benefit or any kind of a bonus is 24 residential units. And the board can increase that all the way up to 30, which is what's shown here, but there should be a really meaningful public benefit that's provided. Um, it's, it's not like a, like a right that you know, that an applicant has to come in and just automatically get that. There really has to be some discussion with the board and some decision making by the board. This is a, a really good public benefit that the town really, really wants to have and um, it's worthwhile in terms of, you know, that increase in the density. The, um, the infrastructure improvements that were talked about, I mean, the, the looping of the water is good, but, you know, the water d division really does require looping with almost all the proposals now. So, you know, I don't know if you really want to count that, but I'll leave the rest of that, you know, that whole discussion up to the board. Um, and uh, I was very glad to hear about the traffic engineer coming on board. I think we talked a little bit about, you know, some of the traffic issues. There is an easement. Um, I did talk with the the owners of the property under that easement that this week, and, you know, I think everybody is on board with that. but. The two properties, the Morning Glories property and this property, there's really kind of a synergy between the two properties. I mean, you're going to have the shared entrance. Um, both of the businesses are pretty close to the street. There's not a lot of parking up there on either side. And I think you really need to get into some really in-depth discussions with each other about how is the situation really all going to work out. And it might be helpful for the planning board. I know it's not, you know, exactly um, typical, but where you do have all this this connection to maybe show the pavement on the Morning Glories plan on on your plans, so that the board and everyone can see where is that pavement, how is this this access going to change, um, you know, where's the how does the drive through interact with, you know, with the rest of this traffic system and, you know, really get a picture of the whole thing. Um, so, um, so those are just a couple thoughts I had. Good one. Thank you, Laura. Laura? Um, we're the Lawn Design Review Committee. Um, we met a couple of times with um, Congress and the latest design they presented was a fast improvement over earlier designs. Um, definitely fits better with 
people to listen to it. Um, as far as going forward, um, just to, to develop a few more details as far as what we talked about the perspective of Stockbridge Road, kind of see how it's... That? Oh, is that the... Yeah. Okay. All right. And I see you added the... Um, I did, yeah. <laughs> um, I can't see this far away, but as far as details from the existing, that residential building, then we kind of talked briefly on how we try to mimic those on the new buildings. Yeah. Um, it was a matter of... Uh, oh, uh, we have, yeah, we don't have details okay. yet. Okay. I guess with the next step going forward, I mean, you know, like light fixtures, more colored selection, that type of thing, just to, you know. It was my impression that when at, the, at, the, at that meeting, basically, you, you, you chunked off some large blocks in terms of direction that, that, mm -hmm. that, that from your design review, from the collective design review standpoint, mm -hmm. it needed to be addressed. And I think, by and large, that they've, they've looked to address those, if not all of those. I think we're, we're there. There's, there's a memo that's a matter of record, I think, of, of that meeting, the minutes of that meeting on it. Um, let me ask if there are you know, some questions or comments from the board, and then we'll open it up to the public. Chris? I'm just wondering if I could make a couple of comments relative to the points that uh, Laura made. Sure. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the uh, benefit, because we're seeking 30, you know, as opposed to 24 units, uh, the benefits that we have pro are providing, one is the uh, connection, that's 120 feet of connection all the way to Drew Street from our property uh, of, a lit, of a lit paved parkway. And I think this will be a true public benefit to allow, right now that walkway isn't used very adequately. I actually own the property where the Greenbush Post Office is in the house beside that, and I'm aware that there's very little traffic down there. And, and to make that connection complete, you know, to a, what will hopefully will be a vibrant, area, and as Greg said, people can, uh, I've been meaning to make the walk myself from there to the train station, but it's a much nicer walk than going up over Stockbridge Street, which is quite an exertion. I think it'd be the same amount of time, but, and, and, and for bicyclists and everybody else to use that path, and right now it's not being used. The other public benefit is <coughs> to already, and that is retaining the existing building. There's an economic sacrifice in doing that. Uh, the last two applicants who came before you with this project in mind were going to put up quite a large you know, mixed-use building with uh, six residential units up top and all of, uh, intense retail development below. And so we've tried to look at this issue and balance it out. And, and the reason the retail unit is relatively modest in the front is that we don't want to block uh, the existing building. And we do have the potential of converting a portion of the existing building back to retail as it once was. At the time I acquired it, it had an insurance agency, a, a, a flower shop, and, and, and we might like to go back to creating more retail and office space in that building as well. Uh, and, the, and the other point uh, on density, we have 30 units, but keep in mind that two of them are studio apartments and 17 are one bedroom units. And so it isn't that much density in terms of people per se, because we could come in with 24 three-bedroom units and, and not require any public benefit, but we're getting much more density into the place. So good, uh, yeah, higher yeah. floor area ratio. Yeah, so it's, it's the density it shouldn't be just, I think, units alone, but how many people and vehicles we're bringing into the environment. Uh, and the other thing I want to point out, I think it's a public benefit that we've opted to go with rental units as opposed to condominiums. This will help you meet your requirements and everything else. All of the units will count towards your 10%. And, uh, uh, and it's a bit of an economic sacrifice in our part, but we, we think it's a wise economic decision. Uh, it might be one of quite the, perhaps, economic payoff, but in the long term, we think it's a good decision for us. But we also think it's a good decision for the town. Yeah. I just want to point I think I think where we really don't have a, the application in front of us, I think, we really aren't going to make a decision as the benefits yes, benefits no, benefits sure. right, benefits wrong right. on it. Let me, let me do this because we've got at 8 o'clock we've got a, a public hearing that we have to have. Let me, if the, if the board will indulge me, what I'll do is ask for comments. I'm particularly interested in the comments of the neighbors in terms of what this proposal is uh, on it. So I would ask that if, if you, uh, morning glories. And would, you, would, you, would you like to address what? Your concerns are, your views yeah, are? We have a few questions, and Kathy went out. We've been discussing this. Um, Kathy O'Leary, I've worked there for 20 years, maybe more years. 
Um, we have a few problems. First of all, we were we still haven't been informed of this meeting. We found out from good intending people who let us know about it. So we're a little concerned that he's been out of the loop and all this, and he is an integral part of this. Um, frankly, I think this entire um, setup here is going to choke the bakery. I don't see it as some synergy or anything like that. I, I see it as us being choked out for many reasons, parking being one. Um, we were told that we could share the parking, but as a previous renter at other places, when I rented units myself in other places, I, you also get a dedicated parking space, generally, when you, when you rent an apartment. So I don't know how Mr. Ford can offer us a parking space that's also being offered to a tenant. So I don't see that as an option. Um, the bakery suffered actually quite a bit over the course of a few years because of a lot of things. Uh, one being the, the MBTA. You know, benefited the town, which is great, but they didn't see the damage it did to the bakery because we lost a lot of business because of um, construction. Um, another was the sewage line on Country Way. We lost a lot of business because of construction. And this isn't going to be done overnight. And I see it as, honestly, a potential nightmare for the bakery, for any kind of continual flow for my boss and for the business. Um, and that, that concerns me a lot because, you know, we, we put a lot of work and a lot of energy into that <coughs> place and to be going along and trying to make some gains and have it stop like that. I think it's a little bit self-serving. Um, one of the concerns I have, which um, Laura addressed, was we are now going to have to have a lot of our customers park out back with us because we have the long parking spaces. So the employees would park at the front end and the customers would park at the, at the rear end. Um, we spoke to, um, I think it was a Deputy Chief Murphy at the fire station about the egress of that space between the existing apartments and the bakery building. And he said there is enough space there for two vehicles to go side by side because we cannot have our drive through compromise. It may sound like a small thing to you, but it's an essential part of this business. Um, my concern is if you have an elderly person, a family who's parking out back and, and they're coming alongside the bakery and you've got two flows of traffic, because that's going to be a lot of traffic. You know, if you have mixed use and you have apartments and everybody's working different shifts and these businesses are open, how do we safely get our customers to go from the back parking lot to the front? And because of that, we have some very, very loyal customers, but they will find other sources of um, <coughs> businesses to go to instead of ours if they think it's, it's one, the efficiency is down, the safety is down, the parking is compromised, and these are very, very essential issues for the, the health and well-being of this bakery. And um, we have a lot of concerns. Anything else? Very good. Anything else? Uh, no, no. Sir, <laughs> introduce yourself and... My name is uh, Todd Williams. I'm at 45 Country Way directly opposite the driveway to Morning Glories. Last Sunday, Morning Glories had over 300 customers between 6 a.m. and 1 p.m., and that's a lot of traffic. I don't care what the bullets build, but I'd like to see a traffic study, a parking analysis, a peak <coughs> time when people are leaving in the morning and coming home, and I also had a problem with the density of 30 units, but that's been addressed to 24. And I think this will put Morning Glories out of business. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm Chick Fagan on 60 Country Way on the cross Stockings Road. Um, I think they've addressed some concerns, but I think my concern is phase one where the building out front, the parking, backing up into the drive, to a, you know, I think that has to be addressed, and I'm sure they'll address it, but that's the critical turning point in this project because it is phase one. And if that doesn't work, 
phase two and three, you're going to have real problems with you. Let me, at this point, let me ask this question. The it's, it's 8 o'clock, and we have a public hearing scheduled for the accessory dwelling for 8 Claymore Terrace. Would the applicant be willing to give us like 10 or 15 minutes? Just, okay. We, we appreciate that. So we've extended our time frame, but that doesn't mean we need to fill it all up. Um, anybody else in the butters? Chris? I want to speak. I want to make sure everything's in the I do want to, I think, they've raised some very important questions uh, the morning for your people. And I, I want to apologize if I did not communicate adequately. We've had some conversations at different times. I just returned from Florida where I spent the winter in the, uh, and uh, in a made attempt, an unsuccessful attempt. <coughs> and, and I actually thought notices went out to about us about the informal meetings. I didn't, so I was not aware that they wouldn't, all the butters weren't necessarily informed by letter. At any rate, having said that, uh, we want to be good neighbors to morning you know, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit and we are going to have an open parking environment there will be no assigned parking people and m many of our residents will be gone all day long they made many uh, my present residents in the, in, in the building there uh, most of their spaces are empty and, and in fact we've been very gracious I think about allowing you know you have customers to park there I, I know I've never really question that maybe a tenant has but uh, we I think there'll be a lot of synergy in this and uh, there are 57 new spaces people can park and my engineer Greg is talking about some driveway potential on the outside and he'd be glad to sit down and meet with you and, and discuss some of these things we're, we're concerned too about uh, people utilizing the drive-through exit uh, and we're going to try and come up with ways to make that clearly discouraged and Greg has some ideas on that he would be glad to meet with you and and share his ideas and, and would be willing to bear the expense of the improvements which we feel might facilitate you know that sort of discouraging people from driving in that direction <coughs> so uh and i also think having 24 new residents ultimately is going to be very good for business i know charlie reynolds said to me i can't wait to have all these new customers coming over to my store and you'll have them too and even during the construction period i, I think most construction people like donuts and coffee from my experience I, I think there'll be a lot of business you know coming from that environment and we are going in stages this isn't all going to happen at once the construction of the building up front uh, will be a rather in the size of a very small uh cottage almost it's only 1700 square feet it's a shell and the tenant will finish it out but we don't see that as being that disruptive and we'll make every effort we're going to uh, we're going to be moving the, the parking behind the building. We'll do that first uh, before we start the construction out first. So this is going to give some more parking opportunities. So I, I really think we can, this can be mutually beneficial by the time yeah, we're let done. Me, let me okay. kind of just stop yes. you there because we're really getting more into the, the, the merits or, of this particular proposal. Okay. What I'd like to do is to come back up and make sure that there's no more public comment and at that point give you the feedback from the board so you, that you'll have that. Question, uh, any other public comment? Uh, can I just say one thing, sir? Sure. Uh, my name is Elsa Well done with the owner of Home Doors. I just think it's no guarantee when the parking space is there, then the people going to live in those buildings, they're not going to leave their car over there and get the train. When we have the construction of the train station, they said that we're going to have a huge business coming to the bakery. Guess what? I over half an hour early, I don't get one cup of coffee sale because of the train. So besides other construction, we lost so much business. And uh, after the train is running, we get no business at all. It's no guarantee that when the parking space is there, people are gonna take the train to work, gonna leave their car over there. It's so close, so convenient, the gas is way too expensive, that it's very convenient for them to do it. So who's gonna guarantee <coughs> that the parking space is not gonna be full with cars, what with all the people for the business going over there to do, you know, whatever they have to do in their new construction as a business, and the people living over there, who's gonna, gonna guarantee then my business not gonna be um, having a lot of problems and they can even lose my business because of this huge construction around my, you know, it's a little business, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great place, but it is if you compare the size of my building to this big construction round, nobody can guarantee that the parking space is going to be available for us. If he rent the apartment, 
how are you going to tell them you have to leave with a car at daytime because one o'clock is near the parking space? Nobody's going to rent the place from you. So that's all. Thank you. Valid point. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Questions to the board? Comments from the board? Commissioner? Um, well, quickly, just to, you know, I, I empathize with uh, the comments that have been made. I actually, I think Kathy probably knows, I go to Morning Glories almost every day. Um, and, you know, from my personal experience, there's never really been, at least up to this point, a difficulty finding a parking space. And as I speak for myself, not the all citizens of Situate, but I value <coughs> the, the food and the offerings, and whether it's congested or not, I would still go there. So I don't think you'd lose business, at least from my perspective. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to make that comment that um, <clears throat> I think that the value that you offer, and there's not that many or there's not that many availability around the Greenbush area. So it's it's unique, and uh, you know I certainly want to do everything we can to support your business and keep it uh, financially viable. So Make one little comment on that, and I do appreciate your saying that, and I do understand what you're saying, but history has shown because of the sewer, the Country Way um, project and the T project, we did lose business. We lost a lot of business, and they did come back afterwards, but especially in this economy, can we, can this business endure a, a, a low time during phase one, phase two, phase three, because it will make a difference. And this business is not going to survive on the construction workers that are coming in for our product. They, it survives off of the community and the surrounding communities who have not historically come back during, they didn't want to come down the street, they didn't want to, and understandably they went elsewhere, they came back but that dry time really hit the bakery very hard. Okay, well, thank you. yeah, very valid concerns. Okay. So, yeah, well, I just, and I, so I wanted to shift just to, to make that comment that I'm very supportive of the business. Um, but the second thing, I guess, with the, the, the informal discussion at hand here, I just wanted to make a couple comments that I read through the design review. I think I agree with everything they said. I like the fact that you did the balconies. I was going to comment on that. Um, I actually like the retail component out front in the sense of architecturally designed. I like the depot kind of um, architecture, which was mentioned in the design review. I really want to uh, commend you on that. I think it actually looks quite nice. Uh, my first comments, or I just, I was a little bit concerned about the parking between the existing structure and the new proposed um, mixed use, just for the fact of it's sort of a dead end. And let's just say potentially all those spaces are full, and then you pull in there and you realize everything's full. Um, that would be difficult to back out unless there is one that there's a turning radius or something. That was just the first thing that sort of struck me was that I've been in those situations. I mean, how many of us have been in a parking garage where, <coughs> like, at the mall at Christmas, and you go all the way up this ramp and, like, everything's full and then there's no turnaround space? It's kind of a nightmare. Um, and I guess the same thing almost, you know, down to the right where it connects to the uh, Greenbush Trail. I'm not so worried about that because that's more resident parking, but with the one in the middle being more commercially, I could see how if those are, I assume, attended, or are, they're intended for more like, you know, realtor, um, not, not so much retail, but maybe more business type on the first floor, um, is what like lawyer, re, you know, something like that. Because that also kind of, I thought, hmm, that's kind of strange how it's sort of back behind the existing um, residential. But at the same time, if they were uses such as like I said, uh, a lawyer's office or, um, you know, some kind of commercial business like that where it didn't necessarily need the street frontage, then I think that would be okay. Um, and I, I wanted to commend you on preserving the, the structure. I think that's really good. And then also just to comment that from all of the previous proposals that I've seen, this is certainly, uh, as Laura said, and as Laura said, Laura and Laura, <laughs> that uh, the evolution has been uh, quite dramatic. And I, I really do appreciate all the effort that you've gone. And I think, you know, again, there's a lot of issues to be resolved, but in my, my initial pass was that it was pretty positive. So. Um, I would agree with everything Richard said. Um, I have a couple of just kind of bullets. I know we're, we're in a hurry, and I know we'll get to talk with you folks again um, more than once and hopefully talk with the abutters as well. Um, 
It seems to me if you were starting with a completely clean slate on this project and it were a planning slash architectural design um, charrette or uh, school project, whatever, you might think about putting the commercial space in the existing building, as you said, Mr. Ford, that it had formerly been, uh, to try and get that closer to the streetscape, to get it closer together <coughs> so that commercial traffic didn't have to penetrate the residential part of the neighborhood so that the parking for that commercial space could be kind of solidified in, in one zone of the site, uh, maybe even develop the courtyard that kind of appears as green between those two buildings as a, as a pedestrian focus uh, so people could go back and forth between the two buildings. Um, I s absolutely concur and sympathize with the point of view of morning glories. I hope and, and almost would re request and require that we see a site plan that includes morning glories parking and circulation as part of it. Uh, it doesn't have to be detailed, but I really want to see how that's going to work. Um, I also would like to know how many spaces Morning Glories has now, um, how many it will have after this um, development is complete of its own, not shared, uh, and how many it would require by zoning. I think those are all important things to consider. Uh, I'm with Laura in that to densify this to the maximum that's allowed um, we're going to have to look hard at what the uh, substantial public benefit uh, is that's going to be provided to the town. Uh, I can't quite correlate what's been talked about so far with that definition. Uh, I frankly think we're going to need more. Uh, and also, lastly, the landscaping and plant materials used here are going to be critical to the kind of overall ambience and how this feels to the as as a part of the, the town's fabric so and i think we'd see it anyway but we're going to need a pretty detailed explanation and and illustration of the landscaping um so that's it i mean basically richard's right it's a huge improvement over anything else we've seen on this site it's an exciting development it's definitely um, going to benefit the greenbush village and, and the town it's just got to be done done right i mean we're going to put a lot of effort into it you're going to put a lot of time and energy and money into it, Mr. Ford, and we want to do it as absolutely as right as it can possibly be done. Thank you. Eric? Thank you. Um, I uh, echo all the things that have been said up to, up to this point, and I have a couple of, couple of questions, and first a comment. First, uh, uh, at, at the Mercer household, we are great fans of the orange cranberry muffins <laughs> and regularly come and, and, and get those. My, my daughter uh, attends college out of, out of state and uh, misses them. Um, second, um, uh, you know, I, I'm a real fan of, uh, of, of, of affordable rental housing for, uh, for younger families. Uh, and, I, and I'm pleased to see that you have one bedrooms and studio apartments and so forth. Uh, but there seems to be a gap, at least in my experience, between uh, that young family that uh, goes from one child to two children and, uh, and there's no, no availability for three bedroom apartments anywhere around. I'm just curious as to, uh, did you consider that at all? Or because um, that seems to me that that would be a, an available benefit that might uh, for the town if there were affordable three-bedroom units that a, a younger family could have. Uh, I'll ask the architect. Are you thinking of that? Well, we did market study, of course, and the, the rents are much better for one bedrooms per square foot. Um, so it's strictly an economic argument, yeah, then. It is. Well, Oftentimes, that's, uh, that's where you run into the public benefit as it runs counter to the economic arguments. But see, the other thing I would add, though, is that... Uh, Always, yeah. there are a lot of, there's a real rise in single-person households, and we're responding to that. It seems that there are plenty of three-bedroom homes in town, and three-bedroom, uh, three, not necessarily apartments, but they can be rented out. Um, really hard to find one-bedroom apartments. So we, we think we're, we're filling a need. And okay. Just to focus on that and not provide the full spectrum is, is not a bad thing, I think. Well, we'll have to look at that more, more in detail at the appropriate time. Thank you. This brings it to me. 
<laughs> um, probably four, four or five items, I think. One is I'm really concerned about the access. Um, I think I, I've, I've got, I've got a con, I've, I've, I've got an issue, and let me, let me, let me pick on Charlie Reynolds' place for a minute. And backing out in, into the road is, is, is actually not a very safe thing, the way that that's, that's set up. Mm -hmm. They're backing out, they're turning to the left, they're turning to the right. What I've now done is I'm backing up <coughs> I've got two points of conflict. I've got a point of conflict of the traffic coming from Morning Glories, mm -hmm. and I've also got the traffic on the, on the, on the roadway on Country Way, and that, that, that concerns me. That's why I, I suggested that I'd really like to see a pretty strong traffic analysis. I'd like to see it come back up and include the entire site so that the traffic, so I'm seeing what the impact is on Morning Glory's current configuration is, because I really, my feeling is, 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 is very strong about it. I don't think they need to change anything, to, and nor should they be negatively impacted. So I think what you've got to do is to integrate into what the, what they've got without having an adverse impact. Now, if you can mutually agree to something that, that's to everybody's benefit, then, then so be it. But that that's really a concern. I'm concerned about the site, the traffic on the site once I get beyond. I think Bob makes an excellent point in the fact that if, if I come back up, even though I'm looking to combine commercial and residence, right, I'm looking to do that on this site, it may be that I, that I put a a larger emphasis on the commercial on the front end of it than on the back end of it. That way there I don't have people coming back up trying to get a parking space. R Richard in his Christmas shopping, for example. <laughs> and I don't want to see him be a lemon going off the, off the ramp. I, I'm really concerned, and, and I haven't had a chance to really look at it in detail, and that's the size and the scope. I mean, when I'm coming down, and I'm coming down Stockbridge, and I'm coming down to the corner, right, I'm looking at at it, it, it a height that's it's higher, and, and let me pick on Chick's barn. Right. God knows I love that barn. But it ends up that it, you're going to be almost eight feet taller than what, what his barn is. Right. And I think that that's, you're going to see that, and, and you're going to focus on that roof coming down. So I think you, you, get, you get a negative response to it, or never negative impact when you, when you see that coming down. So I'd like to see that. Uh, benefit to the town, I don't want to be beat on this anymore, but I think that's that's really the key to come back up and get additional units in my mind, and that is, let's come back and be really positive on it, okay? I mean, the fact that it, it may be more cost effective for you for one way, or it may cost you money to do something, I guess in my own mind, I don't see as a benefit to the town. Um, and then, I think Laura made the point in the mixed use, I'd like, the intent of the, the, the overlay district was to come back up and combine commercial with the residents. What I've done is I've got to put a pocket here, and some residents, a pocket here, and then I've come back up and I've got one that's, that's, that's really all residents. And I think it needs to be integrated uh, on it. So I think you need, need to do that. Um, the last point that I make and you know, I want to make is, is, is straightforward. I, what, what I would suggest is you come back up and you get a fair-sized room, you sit there and you get a pot of coffee and you sit down and you bring all your neighbors in and you sit there and you talk this thing through so that everybody understands exactly what you're looking to do, what their concerns are, so you, you have a sense of, of that. Because that way there you can resolve that before it ever comes back up when it comes in with the application. So that you come back up with a synergy rather than, than, than an argument, okay, uh, on it. And, and I think, you know, there's a couple of builders in town that use that approach and it works very well for them and I think I mean, we've got a much larger project, and I think it would work very well for you. The, you know, I guess that was my next to my last. The last, <laughs> last point is, um, I'm not sure what the impact is of the changes that they're proposing for the 40B on Stockbridge Road, but they're looking to put that into apartments, and I don't know whether you've filtered or filtered that into your equations. Uh, on it. But that may also be a concern because they're, they're coming back up and putting more rental apartments in as opposed to what they originally had proposed. They may, may even be aware of that. I think the meeting is 20... 20th. 20th. 20th or the yeah. 21st. 20th. Um, uh, for, for the ZBA, so you may want to be aware of that. So having said all that, I think... Oh, I want to address one other point, and that was, I think they made a comment about public notice, right? Typically what we do is that once, if we had a hearing, we would come back out and we would provide the public notice mm -hmm. to it, and it's a hearing, because it's, it, it comes at a cost uh, on it. What we can do, be careful here, because I'm volunteering you guys. <laughs> what I'm gonna suggest is if you, 
we, we undoubtedly, I, I'm not, I don't know if we'll have any more informal hearings before we have the actual presentation, but if we do, if you leave your email address with, with, with the planning board office, we'll, I will see we'll, that you get a notification of the next, of the next public hearing. And I think that's, that's about as fair as we can be. Uh, on in, in terms of on that, but but the comment is made about not getting a notice. Ordinarily, you wouldn't get a notice on on something that's public, uh, not 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 an application, but just a public discussion. So I think you've now heard from the abutters, you've heard from the board, you've heard from design review, you've heard from the planner, probably more, <laughs> more than you wanted. So I guess it's, it's your well, opportunity to wrap it up, and we'll hear from you. Can, can I? Oh wait a minute, Bob. I'm sorry. Can I make one more comment, sure. Bill? This is actually addressed to the folks from Morning Glories. You need to remember that something will be built here at some time, you know, and construction, whether the impact is negative or positive on your business, is going to happen um, to some to some degree. That's that's really all I want to say. You, nothing ever stays the same forever. So, you know, we need to make sure it's the right kind of development and it's going to benefit everyone involved right and I <clears throat> just to echo that I just wanted to say that I'm sure there's a comp well, I don't know if word, compromise or a solution or synergy as you said um, <clears throat> in working together because I truly believe that this can work for everyone and kind of like the rising tide floats all boats I, I truly believe that so I, I think it can be beneficial for morning glories and be beneficial for mr. Ford as well well, we will take you up on your suggestion, Bill, of uh, getting a pot of coffee, and we will not buy it at the comp at a competition <laughs> by uh, Morning Birds. That's and, a good and, step. Uh, and sit down and talk, and, uh, and we'll do that soon. So, and Greg, and, and, and we'd like to have that conversation. And I appreciate your comment, to Mr. Vogel, about, uh, you know, I mean, there will be something happening there, and whether it's uh, us, and we'd like to make it as, we've been neighbors for 20 years, and I, I think we've gotten along well. You're not having a stranger come in, you're having a neighbor come in. Right. And work with you, and right. I, I, you know, I, we, hopefully, we like each other. So, and uh, you, you, you've got a number of issues, and that some we're tempted we want to argue about, but we, there'll, there'll be some dialogue, uh, you know, on you on the hand, sort of campus. If we respond to every single issue that has been brought up just across the board now, we, <laughs> we you'd be arguing with each other, and uh, so, but we'll, we'll balance. <coughs> we're going to take pay attention to all of these as we have with design of view. And, and I think uh, we can get, you know, we're very pleased that, you know, they've the sort of appreciated the evolution of the process here. And I think we can now address the issues you've brought up and hopefully reach something that we can all be, uh, can work with. Super. So it, it'll be probably a, in a couple more months before we're ready to come in. Uh, with a full site plan, but in the, in the meantime, we'll digest all of these ideas. In, in all likelihood, okay. the probably the earliest that we'll be able to to address the zoning would be at the annual town meeting. So if they have what a special, that? That would, we probably have a special town meeting in the fall. It's it's possible we'll have a special. I think because of the the national election, they're not sure yeah. you know so how that's going. That would be the earliest. All right, so we probably won't see each other fall then, and uh, it gives us plenty of time to uh, digest and, and, and address the issues you've raised and uh, maybe have some informal talks with. Yourself and Laura in the meantime. Okay. So that's where it's going before. Mm -hmm. right. Steve, you got Anytime. a time. quick comment? Yeah, Steve Yorkman. I just wanted to comment on the last couple subdivisions that we did. We actually collected all of the abutters and, and neighbors, people who weren't abutters but concerned people. Uh, we collected all of their emails and we were actually able to send out one blast email to everybody as we were going through the project and they could respond right to your email, Chris, which worked yeah. out fantastic. So anybody that does want to give you an email, I would suggest yeah. you use it because it's well, really simple. I'm watching Richard with his iPad up there. I was <laughs> going to suggest that uh, these renderings look wonderful on an iPad. You can zoom in and move your fingers and they jump out. And if anybody is interested in seeing, <coughs> we'll be glad to email you all of these uh, floor plans and renderings and uh, so you can take a hard look at them and we'd be more than happy to do that. So I don't know if the sign-up sheet is still around, but if anybody could add emails, add an email to it, uh, we'd be glad to uh, email you these, as well as all the members of the board. Would you like yeah, this? I would very much like that, okay, yes. Okay, we'll do that. And, uh, uh, mm, sure, okay. thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thanks. Everyone. Okay, next item on the list, the ever-patient Joe Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. I, I, I really appreciate that. I saw you painting this afternoon. I know. I fixed that because I changed the name and it was... I know. I heard, I heard all about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
Um, would you possibly like one of these books to maybe the following or something like that? Sure, yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us what you're looking to do. Joan Wilson, A Claymore Terrace, and I'm looking to convert um, <coughs> the garage in the back of my dad into um, a dwelling. So the accessory dwelling. Yes. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, the accessory dwelling is, is a small uh, structure. The total square footage looks like it's going to be less than 600 square feet um, based on scaling <coughs> that garage or carriage house. So it's below the 750 square feet, so there's no issue with the area of it. Um, uh, Joan has signed an affidavit stating that she will live in one of the two units on the site, and presumably the single-family house. Um, the parking is uh, a little bit different in that there's a fence across the uh, gravel portion of the driveway. The uh, plan is to park in the, in the front part on the paved driveway. I think maybe the board wants to just um, mention that in the conditions that if there's some kind of issue that the parking can be opened up and um, you know some kind of gate put in the fence or something so that it's you know just as an option in case some future owner wants to um, have that more as a separate unit. There's, um, a, there's a fence here you say? Yeah there's like a fence right across there. Okay. Where the 22.5 line is? Is that where it is? Uh, where the 70.2 and then where the arrowhead is, that line going across to the right. Okay. It's like, right it's like a little picket fence, but it just yeah, goes across. It's cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's for dogs. Yeah. That, that's that what sense. it's for? Yeah. No, no issue with emergency vehicle access in that case? Well, you know, that's a good point. I hadn't um, explored that at all. I mean, I suppose so a fire truck can take out a picket fence anytime it wants to, right? Through <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I think the issue is the same whether it's a garage or whether it's a accessory bar. Yeah, okay. Because the accessory building, uh, accessory dwelling is in a separate building, the building has to meet the <coughs> setbacks for a single family house in this district, which it does. Um, and uh, one uh, final subject I want to bring up is that a number of people, you know, of course, everyone within 300, 300 feet of the property is notified because this is a formal special permit that's being requested. and. Several people came in to the office with questions about the sewer connection and was the accessory unit going to be connected onto sewer and um, you know that kind of um, that kind of question and it turns out that this property had an emergency connection um, sometime you know the not too distant past I'm assuming they're not on the formal um, map of properties that have been sewered. If, if anyone wants to see that map, we do have it. But this had to be an emergency connection because the system was in failure. And I'm not sure if there are other um, properties up here that had the same situation and are also um, had to make an emergency connection. But um, Mrs. Wilson did talk to the DPW. They told her that she could <coughs> connect it's really an issue that the planning board doesn't have a lot to do with um, as far as okaying it or not okaying it or saying what the requirements are. Um, if there are any um, issues with the, with, the con with the emergency connection and the size of it or whatever, I think there just has to be a condition which, which I believe we've included in the draft that says that the sewer connection has to meet all requirements of the DPW. But, um, just because this unit is getting connected on doesn't mean that it's taking anything away from any, anybody else or that it's, you know, I, I mean, it, sewer is a really sensitive issue in situate. So, um, you know, I don't know how people, um, you know, how people are going to respond to this unit going on sewer, but it really has to do with the DPW and their, um, their authority. So. That's all I have to say. Questions to the board, and then we'll have questions for the public. Christian? I don't really have any questions. I mean, I think that Laura's gone over everything pretty well. Okay. So? Now, my only comment on the sewer situation is it's no different than if you were going to add a master suite to the main house. And, you know, I can't imagine anybody would 
complain about that. In, in the simplest form, I'm relocating someone from one bedroom out of one building and putting them in another bedroom. In the other. Yeah, right. Uh, That's a good uh, point. Uh, Eric? Nothing. Questions on the public? Identify yourself and. Yeah, I'm Bill Sullivan. I'm the owner of the property at 11 Claymore Terrace, which is across the street from the pipe. Um, where are you in terms? Wait, are you where Tommy? Right across the street. You were where Tommy Whalen's house used to be? No, uh, Sullivan's name. Okay. Next to it, next to the Whalen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the sewer is near and near to my eye. <laughs> um, the, uh, the sewer connection actually is a, there are three single spaghetti lines that go from my house, the house. Uh, just uphill from me towards Beaver Dam and uh, Jones House. They go to a common connection up on Beaver Dam and then <coughs> the connection goes into the town sewer at, at Hazel Avenue. Um, my concern is, you know, any, there's three pumps, there's three uh, environmental one pumps that pump the sewage up to that, that, that point. Um, the line and everything, everything is engineered for those three pumps. If any additional capacity or additional pump gets put on, then it has to be re-engineered re or another connection has to be made. When I've talked to the sewer department, I need to tell you about that. Um, I mean, that's my major concern. I mean, if, 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 the, if we can connect into the existing pump um, and that can handle it, the, you know, if the, uh, the capacity is there, it shouldn't be a problem. But if anything has to change, then, then, then it raises an issue of you know, the size of that common connection that we want to And the other, a couple other questions I just had. Um, you mentioned an affidavit before I know what people saw it call it. Oh, one of the requirements of the bylaw is that the owner has to live on the property. They can't rent out both of the units. And to uh, make sure that happens, the bylaw requires that the planning board get an affidavit from the owner saying that they're going to live the on the property. The property they can't rent both the units. They yeah, could rent one the of the property. units, but they have to live on the property. And is, that, is it transferable if the house is sold? Is that yeah, it's transferable. Again, it's, you know, the, my major issue is with the sewer, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a quiet cul-de-sac, it's been there 50 years, I'm just, I'm not sure why we need to increase the housing density on it after all this time. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Bernie, what's the 12 Harbor View Road, which is right behind the property? He's married too. Our dogs bark at your dogs. <laughs> okay. <coughs> You're in Harbor Heights? Harbor View. Harbor View, okay. Um, I, I want to join Mr. Sullivan in his concerns about sewage. Um, and I'm also wondering what happens if the property is divided into s two separate properties. Does it become a separate house? How, how does that work? It can't be. You can't? can't. It's, it's one one property with the main house and accessory accessory dwelling on it. Yeah, I mean it was primarily created like if you had your mother that you wanted to come live with you, or a, you know, you know, typically someone that was a fam could could be a family member or an accessory dwelling. <laughs> right. And I haven't seen the plans. I haven't been able to come to town hall. Is the footprint about the same as what's there now? It's exactly. It, it, is, it is. It is. It is what's there yeah. now. <coughs> yeah. The outbuilding becomes. It's, it's currently a garage, I guess, and what its intent was is garage, and that would become the accessory wall. Thank you. Anybody else? Comments from the board? Do we have a motion? Yeah, well, we let's motion. just clarify one thing. The DPW is going to weigh in on the sewer situation, and they, they have to approve whatever they need obviously to make it work right yeah I mean I think it, it might make sense to <coughs> send them an email or a memo kind of you know summarizing what we heard here which is that there's an issue with pumps and the you know individual spaghetti if you want to call them spaghetti lines um, mm -hmm. going out to Beaver Dam Road and that you know there may be some some issues there they need to you know take into account with adding on this extra unit but you know I so Don't as a planning it. issue, it doesn't really impact us, but as a building department issue, it might. Neil might not be able to give a permit for this, 
if the sewer connection were proper and, and approved. Yeah, yeah. That's basically where the buck would stop if there were a problem. Yeah, and particularly where there's there's some kind of special setup with these pumps. Yeah. You, know, you want to make yeah, sure no, the pump just, can pump all I just want to make sure what we sign off on isn't potentially a situation that's not viable. Somebody else yeah. is going to look and decide whether it's viable. Yeah. Because it's not yeah. really our jurisdiction for the sewer. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Which I understand. But I, I think the situation that's that's being described is a little unusual that, you know, you've got pumps, you've got, you know, these small lines connecting in. Yeah, you know, right, maybe right. somebody should be alerted to that. So we can send um, a memo to to uh, Bob Rowland, who's the sewer supervisor. Okay. Um, and just make sure that he's aware of it and copy Al on it so they both know okay, about so it. Okay, so that'll be part of the but we make a condition. Yeah. Condition. That clarifies the fact that they would be the ones that would have to provide the, the water and the sewer connection to make sure that they're adequate. Yep. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. So does that have, this doesn't have that clause though. It doesn't have that clause, so you can. Okay, I'll, I'll add it. I'll try to add it. <laughs> All right. Vamp a few bars. <laughs> I move to make the following findings of fact concerning the accessory dwelling at 8 Claymore Terrace. On May 11, 2012, the applicant owner of the property applied for a special permit for an accessory dwelling. Number two, the plans submitted with the application are entitled Floor Plans of Carriage House for Wilson, 8 Claymore Terrace, dated 5-11-12, and existing conditions plan showing house location prepared by Morse Engineering Incorporated, dated 4-9-12. Number three, <clears throat> the property is located in the residential R3 zoning district. The side setback is 11.4 feet and the rear setback is 20.9 feet. The carriage house complies with all setback, building height, and yard requirements for a single family house in that district. Number four, the plan shows a proposed accessory dwelling of no greater floor area than 600 square feet. Number five, a site plan by Morse Engineering Co Company Incorporated shows an existing paved driveway. There is also a gravel driveway separated by a <coughs> picket, uh, picket fence <laughs> from the paved driveway, which could easily be easily connected to it. This would provide ample parking for both dwelling units. Number six, the applicant has submitted a signed notarized statement that she will live at 8 Claymore Terrace. Number seven, the applicant uh, our, the application meets the standards of situate zoning bylaw section 530 for an accessory dwelling special permit. I move to approve the accessory dwelling special permit for 8 Claymore Terrace with the following conditions. The oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can <laughs> so I need a motion to approve the findings of that. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. New to this. <laughs> I move to approve the accessory dwelling special permit for 8 Claymore Terrace with the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall meet all requirements of the Building Department, Board of Health, Department of Public Works, Fire Department, Water Department, and other town agencies. Number two, the property at 8 Claymore Terrace shall contain a maximum of two dwelling units, the existing dwelling and the accessory dwelling as proposed. The footprint number of bedrooms and or square footage shall not be increased without prior approval of the planning board. Number three, the owner of the property shall reside on the property as long as it contains an accessory dwelling unit. Number four, except for any changes necessary to meet these conditions, all construction shall conform to the plans entitled floor, floor plans of carriage house and house for Wilson, 8 Claymore Terrace dated 5-11-12 and existing conditions plan showing house location prepared by Morse Engineering Company Incorporated, dated 4 9 12. Number five, connection to sewer <laughs> shall be DPW regulations. Do you want to add, wanna add at that? So, um, and the, <coughs> the, and um, final approval is required by um, the DPW for review of existing pump situation. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, there's a clause in there already that talks about of approval course. by DPW, Board of Health, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I think we're covered. Yeah, I think you're, you're probably covered already. Okay. Number six, no on-street parking shall be permitted. If additional parking is required, the applicant shall provide a connection between the existing paved and gravel parking areas. 
Number seven, this special permit shall be voided if it is not recorded at the Registry of Deeds within 90 days of the date of filing with the town clerk. The owner shall provide proof of the recording to the planning board. And number eight, final, this special permit shall lapse within two years from the date of issuance unless substantial use or construction has commenced prior to that time in accordance with MGL Chapter 40A, Section 9. Is the unit going to be numbered like 8A? No, Jensville just moved to the house. You know, they're just going to have a number. Oh, it has to have a number. Oh, just, no, it won't even have a number. She won't need it, you know. It's no, I think the fire department is going to require well, a number. If, if it's required, yeah. I'll have it as 8A. Okay. Do I have a motion? Do I have comments, questions? Second? I will motion that we accept the uh, application as uh, presented and uh, approve it. I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So tomorrow, do I go talk to Neil? What do I do to go talk to Neil? Not yet, because okay. we have to write the decision, which we'll filed. probably do oh, okay. tomorrow or Monday. Filed, what, 20 days? And file it, and then there's a 20 day appeal period. Okay. So. All right. well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thanks. Back to work. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> when you you're finished, come over to my house. Well, now we can either adjourn or reduce surety for children of state. What's the budget uh, for? Did, did Steve leave? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Next item on the agenda <laughs> is uh, to reduce the surety for children of state. And then we'll get to the class. Tell us what you're looking to do, Steve. Pretty simple. We're just uh, looking to reduce surety. Uh, more of the work has been done out there, and it's been inspected. Laura came out, and Pat Brennan, your consultant, and they reckon, recommended a number that it get reduced to, and that's what we're looking for. Pretty simple. So the reduction would be from 162,000 to 102,388. Yeah, we have a motion. If someone wants to. Is there any, do you want any discussion or anything? No. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I move to approve a reduction in the amount of surety <clears throat> being held by the planning board for completion of the Tilden Estate subdivision from $162,000 <coughs> to $102,338 as the underground electric telephone cable TV conduits have been installed. The BMP swale along the rear lots 12 <coughs> through 15 have been constructed and <coughs> is in use and the trash racks have been installed on the head walls. Is consistent with the consulting engineer's recommendation. Yep. And you, you want to add that? Yeah. Discussion? Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. You know, I think I got a flat tire because of you. I'm, I, but I'm just, I drove through Tilden Estates oh, and like the you next, saw the, nail? the next day I had a nail in my, yeah, I had a nail in my uh, tire. The question is, did you return it? <laughs> And I'm thinking, where was I where there could have been a nail? And the only place I could think of was Tilden Estates. So. Well, that's because you didn't buy a lot when you were in there. <laughs> that's probably why. <laughs> that's it's selling fast. The it's, it's subdivision is unbelievable. That's good. It's one of the fastest ones we've ever sold. It's very nice to hear in this uh, emerging economy. Yeah. And a lot of them are finished buyers that are going in. So I think uh, there will be about seven more houses going up in the next 30 days, I think. Wow. So that's it's, great. It's wow. Really, it may be built out by next spring. No, that's good. Okay, the next yeah. item on the agenda is the extended deadline for the covenant for the Glen to 8-13-2014. Come up front, tell us what you'd like to do. Well, uh, yep. All right, well, um, the covenant's coming up in August, and we wanted to extend it for another year. Um, what else? Actually, we had, um, I think, in the letter, they wanted uh, two years. Two years. So. <coughs> okay. So. so it's a function of the status of the work that's been done thus far. Yeah. Yeah, there's still quite a, I mean, a lot of work to do out there, and uh, I think the the owners are, you know, looking for someone to, to build it out. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, to have the deadline be August 2012 certainly isn't going to work because nobody can build it that fast. So the two years makes sense, and it kind of tracks with the uh, Permit Extension Act. So, yeah. you know, it yeah. seems like a good thing. Questions from the board? Motion. All right. Yeah, I read your recommendation. It makes like it was part of what needs to be done. Yeah, so. yeah I think it's really it really needs to be done. Okay, I move to approve the extension of the time for completion of road and water infrastructure in the definitive plan covenant for the Glen from August 13th, 2012 to August 13th, 2014, as it has been infeasible for the applicant to meet the time frame. No second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You have been extended. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're yep. more than welcome. You had to wait all that time. Hopefully it was interesting. <coughs> <laughs> Clerical duties will let you continue with the county. Oh, yes. Okay, well, I think we have a whole bunch There's, of bills. Oh, a whole bunch of bills. Interesting bills, though. It's not your usual boring bills. Okay. <laughs> um, so are these all together, or? No, each one is a separate separate, um, separate bill. Okay. Each little pack of stuff. All right. Where's the? Okay, I move to uh, pay uh, seventy-eight dollars and thirty-eight cents to W. B. Mason. For bulletin board for the planning space, um, which is the, the new area where Laura moved into, um, and office supplies, cork tiles, and miscellaneous. For how much? Oh, I'm sorry, I did seventy-eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, <clears throat> I move to pay. $294.52 uh, for two nights hotel accommodations for the MAPD conference in Springfield, Massachusetts. This was for uh, Laura um, staying over and attending that conference. And the bill is $294.52. Nice <laughs> no. Well, it's two nights. Actually, that's not bad. It's pretty no, nice I mean, if, for Springfield. If that were Boston, it'd be a thousand. You couldn't park your car for that. <laughs> if you're going to stay in Springfield, it was a very good place. All those in favor? Aye. And if anybody wants a little report on the conference at some point, I'll roll that out. And how was the hotel in case we're out that way? It was pretty good. Oh, good. All right. So I moved to pay $54.40 for the actual registration fee for that said conference. I, that's actually mileage. Oh, it's mileage. I'm sorry. It says reimbursement. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't read far enough. Uh, for mileage for the MAPD conference in Springfield. Um, so that is $54.40. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks, guys. I know she's done an analysis and it was cheaper to drive than it was to take the bus. <laughs> <laughs> or the train, even. There's the bar bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what this is for. Oh, okay. Um, I moved to pay $108.54 uh, to the community newspaper company for the legal ad for the eight Claymore Terrace accessory dwelling that had to be put into the paper um, for public notice. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I moved to pay $441.25 to uh, Armor Armory Engineers. Uh, for their professional services for March uh, through May 31st for the zoning map update. Yeah. Zoning sure. map is basically all done. Um, <coughs> you guys saw that a few weeks ago, yeah, a yeah. few meetings ago. I'll okay. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that completes the bills. We have approval. Um, Minutes? Oh. Yeah. Need three I know we do. Sorry. Just the point where we, we bring up the uh, the surety for tilling the states again and decide not to grant it now that Steve's gone. <laughs> Reconsideration. Yes. <laughs> hey, this is only my, my second day as a clerk, right? You're doing great. <laughs> What we can do is 
I'm sure Karen will type up some draft motions so that she can practice reading them. <laughs> I might need that. Something to do on your way to work in the morning. Well, I don't know if you should be reading in the car. <laughs> as long as you're not texting. Um, okay, is there just the one here? Yes. Okay. I move to approve the uh, Situate Planning Board meeting minutes from May 24th, 2012. These are the ones that were sent out by email? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good job in minutes. So that is the... That brings us to town planning report. Okay. Counting uh, A couple of things. I wanted to let everybody know that um, Bill and I were supposed to meet with Barry Keppard from MAPC. MAPC is the regional planning agency that we're, you know, we're a part of the metropolitan Boston region. Bill and got tied up and never made it. Bill got tied up and never made it. But I met with him, and um, it was kind of interesting. They're trying to get the town, whether that's the planning board or the selectmen or whoever it is, to identify areas that should be preserved forever in, or for the long term and situate and areas where development should happen. Hmm. So um, I sat down with him and gave him some ideas. He's going to be coming back to a planning board meeting sometime probably in August or September. I don't know if you want to invite other boards into that meeting just to um, see if anyone will come and participate. Um, it might be a good idea. And I just wanted to pass out what, um, what my conclusions were, which I shared with <coughs> Barry, and um, just so you all can see what my thinking was and then you know, just take it wherever you want to take it when he comes back. Also next Thursday, I have in my calendar to meet for the South Shore Coalition, which is part of the MAPD. Right. Um, so I'm right. going there next Thursday. To oh, good, good, okay. Um, okay, um, I'm working on a grant application for the property that was um, voted to be purchased at town meeting, the Higgins McAllister property, uh, just so people know that that's in the works. The, um, one of the older subdivisions we have, Kimberly Estates, is one of the ones that has some um, surety left on it. It has about $60,000 in surety. It's got a few little issues with the roads. It also has a uh, walkway from that subdivision over to, I believe it's Pyramid Lane to another another subdivision, which is kind of a nice thing to have, and this walkway has fallen apart, but not completely, but it's in a state of disrepair. And it's shown on the plan, so, um, so anyhow, uh, make a long story short, I think that that one maybe makes sense for the planning board to you know, begin the process of going after the surety. I mean, we'll have to put it on the agenda. You guys will have to formally talk about it, mm -hmm. but I just... It was uh, uh, Dick Matthews. <coughs> he is in Florida uh, a lot of the year, yeah. and I've had a lot of trouble getting in touch with him. Um, so anyway, um, scenic roads, you may have noticed when you drive in Norwell that they have some really nice scenic road signs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, Karen and Kevin Cafferty are both involved with, with Norwell in different ways, and, and I also thought this was a good idea to explore doing something for Situate that would be, you know, obviously not the same, but something also um, pretty and um, eye-catching that would help people understand that these are special roads. These aren't just every ordinary road. These roads really have a different status, and they're... Um, they're hopefully the status is that they're scenic. So what we're doing is we're looking into um, a design and um, we're going to try to make this, um, get all the information to Trisha because Trisha is going back to the CPC with an application that she tried to do last year for, um, for signage around town for um, like 
having something on 3A to tell people where the Lawson Tower is or how to get to the Situate Lighthouse, you know, things like that. And uh, she thought that we could, you know, blend this in with that, so. Nice. Uh, My only comment would be idea. that yeah. the, the signs in Norwell, the, or <clears throat> what it says, like Scenic Road, is so small. Like, it took me, like, I actually had to almost pull over and read it because I kept thinking, what are those things? Because I couldn't okay, read it. That's a good point. <laughs> but you want to make yeah. sure the sign doesn't detract from the scenic quality of the road. Right. right. Well, they're just, productive. they're normal <laughs> street signs. Yeah. But there's this little, just at the top, there's like a round arch to it and it oh, says scenic mean, road. I see. Where this, it's and, but it's so small. with the street sign itself. Yeah, know, it's just I a normal green yeah, street I've sign, those, but yeah. there's a little, mm -hmm. like, half circle. Yeah, nice. And, you know, for the life of me, I was like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. And you know, I don't when, really think. Once you read it, then you know what it is. Then you is. know what it is, but I don't think that that was. I, I wish that ours would. My comment would be that maybe they'd be a little bit bigger or a color change, something. Because I do find the ones in Norwell, unless uh, the first time you're trying to figure out what that is, it was difficult. Okay, that's good. For an know. old person like myself who couldn't read the street <laughs> sign. <laughs> the other thing well. I would mention is that they've got a CPC and they're putting. Low signs to identify bike, bike trails to go between the major historical structures. Oh, are they starting to work so on that? Is somebody well, working on that? It was approved, and the concern that, that, that I have is if I, but historic buildings have certain signs, and I'm going to have scenic roads that have signs, there should be a commonality between all of them so that at least the signs look the same so that if you see the, a blue, white, and sign, then, then you know that it's a town sign and it's representative of either a scenic road or, or access to a scenic site or a historical site. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a But that's yeah, not that's the way thought. things are being done now. Right now I've got the historical doing their thing. I've got CPC, you know, the bike, bike people are doing their thing. And I've got multiple signs that are out there that even the CPC signs are, are not consistent. Yeah. So it would be nice to have, a, you know, either a format and then maybe you know, the arch that says it's a scenic road or it's access to whatever. Uh, so it, to provide some consistency. So one, as I see it, I know Absolutely. that it's a town sign and it's giving me information and I can look at it and tell me what, what it is, yeah. whether it's directions or whether it's a scenic road. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think these are just going to be like ordinary road signs. They're not going to be anything special like like a freestanding sign. It's it's just going to go, well, okay, well, <laughs> give me some ideas on how to do that. Um, and I just want to mention also this uh, comprehensive permit uh, change that's coming in for Stockbridge Woods. It's coming to the zoning board um, next Thursday also. It's coming to the design review committee on Wednesday. And it was a little bit of a sales job to get the attorneys for this applicant to come to the design review. But, you know, we, I talked about how, uh, you know, what a great process it is, how they, you know, see how to make the whole development more attractive and more economical and, you know, all these other great things. And they must have bought it because I think they're going to go. So. <coughs> so, anyway, that's it. Okay. The final item for the evening, before we get Bob's motion to adjourn, is I sent out a copy of a letter that I got from Joe Norton, uh, who's chairman of the board of selectmen. Uh, regarding the study meeting for 618, and I think you guys have all indicated that you're going to be able to. I think Dan is the only one that's not going to be. Yeah, able. I'll be there. All right, Karen's posted Monday. the meeting, so we're we're, we're clean to go, and we can participate in the discussion. So the agendas for the meeting are in the folders. Yeah. So I think this is a, a good. It's going to be. A, hopefully, it'll be a good working session. As I indicated in my note to everybody, that they've got a facilitator who's going to come in and be talking. And facilitating so there will well, be. And I saw in the Mariner today that it was announced as well. It yep. was in the paper, so that means everyone or is should be invited. Mm -hmm. Selectmen are very conscious of open meetings now. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> um as an item, I also you sent out the for the alternate position. Is yep. there any update or anything you want to say on that or anything that we need to do? Oh we'll hand that over to Gil. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll hold off until probably the first first part of July before we come back and we advertise that. That way there we can come back up and set up time for the hearings okay. and interviews. Okay. Right. But in the meantime, if you know someone who wants to, just tell them to keep their eyes or ears open to afford. But at this point in time, I think we've got enough on our plate so that we don't need to do it right. right. Now that we've got you full time, <laughs> we're all set. <laughs> on a trial period. <laughs> just the clerk function. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask, just quickly, since you were doing a town planner report, on the 
uh, Riverway condominiums. I know that they're entering their final phase. Mm -hmm. There was a retail component to that that was, my understanding, very, very similar to the one that Ford is, present, is mm -hmm. presenting. Do you know the status, or was there any kind of time limit that they had, or they were phasing it in? Or I was yeah. just curious. It's kind of interesting you brought that up, and I'm not sure if it's for the same reasons that, that I heard about it, but I was <coughs> contacted by an attorney for the uh, family that owns the cemetery, and they were wondering about when the walkway is going to be completed. There's a, um, a landscaped walkway that's supposed to go through that property that's on the on the kind of the back side of the parking lot. Um, it goes out to the driftway, but right. it's not where the entrance is, it's on the other side. Right. And uh, the people who own that cemetery are really concerned that this is never gonna happen. So I did call the, the developer and ask him, you know, what was going on and was it connected to the plans for the retail building because it kind of makes sense that you wouldn't want to create this beautiful landscape walkway and then go in with your bulldozers and you know build the foundation for the for the um, retail building. So he said yes. You know it's all going to be done at the same time, and he thinks in the fall that he'll work on the retail building. But um, it you know to my mind it really should be it's 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 part of the special permit. They're affordable units above that retail building that kind of tie into the whole special permit and how he got the number of units there um, because it's a planned development. Um, and if you all want, we could, you know, think about send, you know, bringing him in and asking him, you know, maybe a little more pointedly um, than my asking him, you know, what he's, what he's going to do or send a letter to him and just say that there's a concern um, about, about the time frames. I mean, I don't know. Um, and that you know you're glad to hear that he's going to do it in the fall, and maybe he'd like to give you something and you know a little more um, firm, you know, explaining when he expects to build it, and if he's got some market information, you know, what is it? But you know, just remind him that he's really required to build that. Mm -hmm. well, I guess in my mind, since this thing with Ford is going on, <clears throat> it just kind of makes sense that we kind of know what the whole yeah. um, mm -hmm. ecosystem, if you will, yeah. <laughs> or the, the, the whole area. Watershed. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, with Greenbush, I mean, we've got a couple of things that are kind of, you know, in play right now. Yeah. So it would be nice to know. So I'd, I'd advocate that, if depending on how you feel. Yeah, I think, we, let's, I think let's, that's let's a good idea. Send him a letter. Okay. Just send it over my signatures saying that we want an update in terms of you know, time, a timeline of when he's going to do that, and your understanding is that the uh, access to the cemetery is, is an integral part of that, and when that will be done. Yep. Laura, speaking of that, do we know what the retail building is target, <coughs> targeted for? Is it truly retail? Is it office space? Is it uh, uh, I think they had talked about um, a branch bank, uh, maybe a, you know, like a little mini uh, ATM and okay. tiny branch bank, okay. something like that, or? The, the reason I'm asking is, is kind of roundabout, but I, it occurs to me that the Ford development um, is looking at potentially some office space as part of the mixed use component. And I'm wondering what the present vacancy rate on the driftway is now for office space, and it's pretty darned high. And I'd yeah. hate to have more of the same kind of space developed and go vacant and also impact the chances of the existing uh, buildings, you know, getting rented, rented up, which, which I think they ought to be. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's a concern point. that I have on the whole four development. In other words, when it comes back out, I want to make sure that I'm providing commercial space, which is an integral part of the bylaw, but I'm providing something that can be utilized. And, and, and I, don't, I don't need to have apartments over an empty, empty office space. Right. And you don't need office space available that's going to decrease the chances of the existing available office space not being rented out. Agreed. Yeah. Well, is the the uh, Economic Development Committee, I know they were looking at like what was available. That's not really one of their charters is to like know like what, I mean they were going to do something about, that was the consultant, right? Uh, that was saying, okay, what businesses are in town and where are they located and what do we need? I mean, that study might say we have an overabundance of, of commercial space yeah. in Greenbush if that is yeah, going forward. Yeah, it, it might. It might. That's, that's a good, good point to bring up too. This 
uh, regional discussion of commercially developable as opposed to not areas, they should be in on that discussion. I mean, this absolutely, yeah, they should definitely be invited to it. Right. And um, if their consultant, you know, winds up coming up with different ideas, I mean, I think, I think whatever this plan is that the MAPC is working on can be, you know, adjusted to mm -hmm. reflect sure. that. Yeah. That's good. So. And as a side note on all these properties, we've been at work, we got this pedometer and we're supposed to do like 12,000 steps a day, which I've been woefully inadequate. But um, anyway, it's given me the chance to actually walk around all these properties, which has been really good. So I've walked around the, the riverway several times, so I know exactly yeah. what you're well, talking about. I haven't done a detailed analysis, but I would suspect that if you walk to Starbucks in the morning and got your coffee and walked back, you'd hit your... That's a little bit far for me. That's... Yeah, but you'd have you'd have steps to the bank. You're talking about walking all the way across <laughs> Ditch uh, <laughs> and back. <laughs> but anyway, so I have around Greenbush anyway. I've certainly walked um, the Ford property multiple times, so it's very interesting. Anything else? Bob has a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Question on the meeting minutes: Is it just me that needs to be signed, or does there needs to be three signatures? Okay, then I think this is all set. Does it make us look good, Zach?